As a former sailor myself, I love films at sea, and I'm a big fan of vampires too, but I don't think I'd want to be stuck on a ship with one. Welcome everyone to FF Plus, your outlet for reviews that are simple, short, and spoiler free. I'm your host, Aaron White, and I am really excited to talk to you about a movie that I've been looking forward to most of this summer. The film is The Last Voyage of the Demeter from Universal Pictures. It stars Corey Hawkins, Ashling Franchosi, David Desmalkian, Javier Botet, Liam Cunningham, and Woody Norman. It is directed by Andre Overdahl, written by Bragi Shute Jr. and Zach Olkiewicz, and it is based on The Captain's Log, a chapter from the 1987 novel Bram Stoker's Dracula. Cinematography is from Roman Osen. Music is by Bear McCreary, and it is edited by Patrick Larsgaard. It runs 118 minutes and is rated R for bloody violence. What's it about? A crew sailing from Carpathia to England find that they are carrying very dangerous cargo. Yes, in a movie based on a book about Dracula, you can assume that that cargo is probably dangerous. So this is specifically covering chapter seven of the Bram Stoker novel. And I love that this story gets right into it. We see the wreckage of the Demeter and we get a little bit of backstory telling us that the ship has sunk in the present or shipwrecked, I should say. And then we discover the captain's logs and we go immediately back to the port where they are picking up a good number of crew to set sail on their way to London. They also are picking up the crates that are being mysteriously delivered by some Romani people from the mountains, and they have these very suspicious dragon symbols on them, of which one of the potential crew members from the port actually recognizes and freaks out and is like, I want nothing to do with this. That was their first sign that maybe... This wasn't the best idea and that taking unknown cargo <laughs> delivered to an unknown person on their manifest was potentially not the safest thing to do. In this port, they pick up some new crew members, including Corey Hawkins's character, Clemens, who will become the ship's doctor. Now, most of this story takes place at sea, which I absolutely loved. As I mentioned, I was a sailor for 15 and a half years. I've done many deployments out at sea, and this captures the feel of that really, really well. I'm always aching for more naval-based films, and I think that this understands what it's like to be part of a ship's crew. It includes things like the importance of standing watch at night to make sure that the ship is staying on course and not running into anything. The dangerous way that People in the late 1800s and before had to climb the mast to unfurl the sails. No, thank you. That is something that I personally am just really glad that I've never had to do in my life. The limited food supplies and what it would be like if you lost your ability to make food and what you would do in the absence of that. The feeling of being stuck with nowhere to go. You can go forward, you can go aft, but you are ultimately confined to this singular moving space and you are at the mercy of what is happening on that ship. And then even the ways of communicating back then on a ship, of using a series of knocks on the ship's hull in order to send a message to people at other parts of the vessel. The production design for the Demeter itself was just fantastic humongous standout in this film. It was enhanced by an incredibly strong sound design, core, and Bear McCreary's very eerie and evocative score. If there's one major strength that impressed me the most about this whole movie, I would say it's Overdahl's ability to create an atmosphere. The ship looks amazing, and the whole movie just maintains a consistent tone of dread mixed with this impossible situation uh, and this feeling of being stuck out at sea. And I, and I really vibed with it. Plot-wise, there's really not that many surprises because this sticks to the book 
meaning most people know how it's going to end. There is some room here for creatively imagining just how Dracula got loose on the ship and was able to torment the crew. I feel like they accomplished this to a satisfactory level, but there's nothing quite memorable that occurs. None of the deaths are shocking enough in the way that they stayed with me overnight uh, specifically, and that might be a little bit of an area where this could have been improved. I did enjoy the characters, though. The addition of a young grandson to this crew. He is the captain's grandson named Toby, and that was a particularly impactful emotional choice based on what ends up transpiring for this character over the course of the vessel's journey. And even the fact that they clearly were going to kill off many of the crew members that were picked up in the port and just kind of added to the ship at the last minute, I thought that they were treated with a dignity as humans worthy of being mourned. And they weren't just murdered off by this vicious unseen force and used as food in a way that the audience was not supposed to feel sorry for them. We definitely, I think, wished that no one would have perished. You know, there's different personality types within these crew members. There's the more rambunctious ones. There's the more outspoken ones. Um, there's the more superstitious ones. And so you may not necessarily agree with everybody's attitude and the way that they act at all times. But they all were contributing members to this crew in a fair way and didn't deserve their fates. The main characters and the biggest name actors in the film, though, were definitely the higher point. Casting Liam Cunningham, Sir Davis Seaworth himself from Game of Thrones as the captain, it may feel kind of like typecasting, but it it's simply a perfect choice. He nails the look and demeanor perfectly. And his voice sounds incredible when doing some narrating of the captain's log at various points throughout the movie. I honestly wanted more of that because his voice is just so deep and so soothing. And it, it just sounds awesome. Uh, Corey Hawkins is also really wonderful as the ship's doctor and primary protagonist. His English accent sounds great. It's very consistent. And he brings that man of science angle to this story about humans confronting an evil that they can't explain by normal means. His character is all about wanting to understand the world, and that's tied to his own past and his own experiences with being shunned because of his skin color and not able to practice medicine, even though he has this high-level degree. I really enjoyed this backstory and the setup. And while it doesn't particularly develop a ton of his character, I think the film ultimately leaves it open for doing more of that in what could make for a really awesome sequel. And I would love to spend more time with Clemens and get to know him and how this experience changes his life. The other standout for me was David Dusmalkian as Wojciech, the first mate. Between this movie and Oppenheimer, I gotta say, I've become a fan. I, this man can really act. He has a really strong range that I don't think I quite knew before. He usually gets typecast as well as just the guy that looks kind of weird. But I think his role here was pretty powerful. Honestly, he is in line to take over the Demeter once the captain is going to ultimately retire. And that influences his ability to make good decisions sometimes about what the crew should do in this harrowing situation. And then Ashling Franchosi is solid as well. Also someone who was previously on Game of Thrones, but her standout performance came in a movie called The Nightingale. Uh, she is Anna and a Romani stowaway that is found in the hold of the crew. And uh, she's incredibly important to the story and to helping the crew eventually understand what is happening to them. Unfortunately, I thought that her character was a little underserved, narratively speaking, and I was left wanting more from her. And this is despite a highly dramatic moment of very deserved agency where she gets to make a big choice that is effective 
But in the big scheme of things, I felt like we could have done more with her than what was accomplished. As for Dracula himself or itself, himself, this isn't one of those sexy and sinister vampires that so many films like to use. This is a purely monstrous supernatural evil. Perhaps in a sequel, we may see him grow more into a familiar looking character. And maybe he'll use one of the classic vampire abilities to illusion himself into a beautiful form. But here he is simply feeding to stay alive and to regain his power. And usually when we see him, it is lurking in and striking from the shadows. I talked with a friend after the movie who was a big horror fan, and he said that he wished they'd gone a little more heavy on scares and creative kills. And I can completely understand where he's coming from. And especially agree with the latter, that the, the death scenes, as I mentioned before, are nothing that stuck with me as particularly interesting. But as someone who doesn't love the bloodiness and the goriness of horror, and even the scariness of horror, I found the consistent high level of tension and that atmosphere I mentioned to be a perfect and a replacement for genuine scream out loud kind of scares. There is definitely some gore, but it's usually very brief and it's just that ever present dread from seeing Dracula's bat-like fanged body hiding in a corner or flying around in a heavy fog that kept me on edge and worried for the crew. As I've reflected on this, I have to admit that the story is very lean and that is precisely something I love about it. It may not be for you, other than a few conversations between characters that allude to the ideas of religion versus science when it comes to facing off against the unknown, it's very straightforward. This is a movie about staying alive as long as you can in a confined space, not unlike Ridley Scott's Alien in some ways. Perhaps the absolutely killer atmosphere and the joy of watching an entire movie that takes place out on the ocean won't appeal to you as much as it does me, but I still urge anyone with even a passing interest to take a chance on this. It is technically so well made, and it was a great theatrical experience, and who knows, you might just come out really loving it and hoping for a sequel like me. The Last Voyage of the Demeter will be in theaters on August the 11th and definitely gets a very strong recommendation from myself. If you see it, please let me know. You can find me on social media all over the place. The links to my channels as well as the ones for our show are in the notes to each and every podcast episode and YouTube video. Seek us out. Like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff as well. It helps us grow and it helps other people discover us. We hope that we have helped you make some decisions about what you're going to see here. That's our goal. And we hope you've enjoyed watching or listening. I'll be back soon. Until then, keep watching and keep feeling.